Construction impacts our daily lives in unique ways. It shapes the cities we live in, the homes we dwell in, builds the infrastructure that drives our economies. Yet this global $17 trillion industry is one of the world's most wasteful and inefficient. And we believe it is because whilst we design digitally, we still construct manually. Construction is inundated by outdated tools and processes. They just don't have the technology to measure and keep track of what they're trying to build. They use chalk, bits of string to construct, and post-it notes to keep track of progress on multi-million euro projects. For example, on a site in Oslo last year, a structural beam was brought to the attention of site management. This was three centimeters deviated from where it was supposed to be built and missed entirely by existing quality control, including the site surveyors. Now, if left undiscovered, this would have cost thousands of euros, seven days in delays, and the valuable time of eight site managers. And that's just one beam. And the reason this happens over and over again is because of the outdated technology that construction uses. And they consider this as normal. And this is the problem that we are trying to address at Scale Robotics. With robotics and artificial intelligence, we are building tools that can help you accurately measure and keep track of construction so that your projects will stay on budget and on schedule. It's simple. You can't manage what you cannot measure. And that beam I told you about in Oslo, automatically flagged up by software developed by Scale Robotics within 24 hours and brought to the attention of site management. It was fixed at no extra cost. So how do we do all this? Our robots drive around site, building detailed 3D maps of the environment. This captures the current state of the construction project. This data is then automatically uploaded to our servers in the cloud, where it is analyzed by our software. Switch to demo, please. So we take this data. We perform non-rigid registration, non-inner optimization, machine learning, to filter out all the noise and provide precise statistical analysis about every element on site. And this complex information is then simplified and delivered back to the client on an easy-to-use web-based interface, as you see before you. The simple color-coded information that you see here is gray means we don't have enough data to make an assessment, red means it's missing, green means it's been built correctly, and orange, as you might have guessed, means it's built incorrectly. <laughs> and as you can see, we're standing in a sea of orange, <laughs> which means everything is wrong. But now knowing everything is wrong is not particularly useful information. What you care about most as a site manager is what's putting my project most at risk. And we make this information searchable. So let's say you've had issues with the quality of steelwork, and you want to isolate all the steelwork. You can say, show me all my beams and columns, not only that, filter them by date of build. Not only that, filter them by quality of build. Say something like, show me everything that's deviated above x millimeters. Now, what you get is a list that's automatically ranked by deviation, so you can focus your attention on what's putting your project most at risk, rather than having to sift through hundreds of thousands of data points you can even go ahead and diagnose one of these issues further. Look at point-wise deviations on a heat map. So you've gone from holistic site-wide information to extremely granular information. You can see some of these points are deviated up to 45 millimeters. But I like to see this with my own eyes. So we've tagged every element on site with multiple images so that you can see it from multiple vantage points. And as you can see, all beams look the same, so you can highlight that element and know what exactly is going on with your site. And this information, this complex analysis, is available to all stakeholders at their fingertips even before setting foot on site. Switch back to presentation, please. So we are taking this to market on a B2B SaaS model, and we seamlessly integrate with existing workflows, including existing laser scanners. We also integrate with all widely used industry standard file formats. Our typical client is a multi-billion euro general contractor. We onboard them with a single project, and then we grow within their organization. We are running active projects in Europe 
and we've done tests in both Middle East and in Asia. We also want to thank our partners at Autodesk, who have the largest market share in AC software. They've championed our work to their customer base. Every product needs a great team. We are an eclectic mix of industry and academic experts. We're more than half of our team has PhDs. My co-founder, Stuart, is a trained architect with over a decade of experience in the construction industry. I have a PhD in robotics and artificial intelligence, and I spent my past decade working at some of the world's most renowned labs in both industry and academia. So to all the large general contractors out there, are you tired of 1% to 2% margins? Shoot us an email. We are confident that our software will help you stay on budget and on schedule on your next project. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, judges, do, while do you, you're admiring the robot, let's have some so questions. Do you, yeah. pro do you provide the robot as well, or is it your software that will power any robot? Oh, hello. <laughs> So <laughs> the robot is optional. Our software platform is agnostic to any reality capture device. Okay. So this is where we seamlessly integrate with existing workflows. If you have a construction-grade laser scanner, you can just upload that data to our servers, and we can still operate on that. The robot is one of the reality capture devices we've built so that it can be faster to capture. But that you, it'll integrate into Yes, any it's the same working. platform, the same web base you saw. Any point cloud goes in there, we can work on And then on the, the second question is the data that goes in for the materials, for example, that, that mm -hmm. the columns-based stuff, is that coming in from the Autodesk software or other platforms? Or again, is that data being input into your platform manually? The 3D model that is there of the yeah. building, that is provided to us by the general contractor. So this is a model that's called a BIM model, a building int information model. And this is given to us by the general contractor. And then we take that information beforehand, and we keep it. And then on regular, when the site gets scanned on a regular basis, we take it into our platform. And that information can be reused across multiple projects, multiple clients, multiple projects. The building that you see is project specific. So it's like if you're working on one project, you will get a URL to that project, so you can manage that project. If you are giving us multiple projects, then you will get a dedicated access to each one of those projects. Okay. And the data is automatically uploaded to whichever project it belongs to. OK, thank you. How many uh, construction projects use <coughs> data capture either via your robot or another? So how many are starting for the first time doing this kind of data capture, and how many already do it? So we spent 2019 working on a couple of pilot projects. So we had three main customers that have been using the software, testing it out on a couple of projects and making sure that what we'd built was actually useful to real project teams. And for 2020, we have another 10 companies that are in the pipeline that have either already uh, sent us some sample data, or we're going to be capturing data in early 2020 to move uh, further on in the pipeline. But, Can you but, give us a, sorry, after so, you. Sorry, just, uh, but construction projects right now, they do, as a habit, capture visual data? or. Or, or that's something new that, that you have to get them to do? Sorry, could you repeat the question? So projects right now, they already capture visual data that you could use? Or like, is that standard already? So in the industry? one thing that's standard in construction right now is using kind of standard laser scanners, like yeah. on a tripod. So we can also, as Barrett mentioned, we can take that data. Right. So it means without shipping the robot off halfway around the world, that's when we're in Europe, they can just send us legacy data. And then we can show them objectively on one of their sites what that kind of analysis actually looks like. And then through that conversation, you can break down a lot of friction, and it's a lot easier to move forward once they've kind of seen it on their own site. OK. Um, so the what margins are, your are quite. You go ahead. <laughs> well, what are your thoughts about the construction industry in, in general? I mean, the past decades, it's been booming, and there's a lot of new projects. What are your thoughts about overall macroeconomics af affecting your rollout? So I think I'll answer part and Stuart will answer part. So BIM adoption has been growing in the last, uh, I would say, five years has grown by 70%. And big companies like Autodesk have actually focused on that, that the BIM adoption is growing. It's also being mandated by federal governments, like the government of the UK, the government of the Netherlands actually mandates BIM adoption. And we are riding on that wave, is that because now companies and governments are going ahead and saying, you have to use BIM, these 3, 3D digital models, to make your projects more precise than working with paper, there is a growing adoption, and that is what we are trying to cash in on, which is we can make their project, we can help them optimize using that. I think the, the industry kind of has a bit of a bad reputation. <laughs> it hasn't really changed over the last 50, 100 yeah. years. But at the same time, in the last maybe 5, 10, it has definitely started to respond to some of the challenges. Because we've really, as an industry, we've reached a breaking point. Uh, you look at the UK, 
uh, Carillion two years ago, the largest construction company in, in the UK, went completely bankrupt. Thousands of people lost their jobs. You've got outside stresses on material access, access to labor, especially if there's going to be a problem in the UK. So all of these things are coming together and putting a lot of pressure on the industry. So no matter what happens, they're always going to have to turn to solutions like this to optimize how their work, uh, their workflows are going. Uh, otherwise, they're going to go the way of Carillion. Right, because, because this is also going to make their work more efficient as long as the projects are running, like it could save their costs. You're saving on your yeah. bottom line from day one. So for example, on one of the pro I won't name the project, but the first day that we deployed, we took data on one floor of the building and we caught at least between 10 and 20,000 euros worth of mistakes. So that was just day one. And you can imagine what that means to your bottom line. That's actually where I wanted to understand a bit more. I mean, because the construction industry margins are very, very thin. So can you give us an idea of maybe not that extreme case, but on average, what, what level of savings do you think your software can provide and relative to the amount that you're going to charge people for your SaaS platform? So it's kind, of a, it's kind of broad because every project is kind of unique. So the value that we're delivering on a large uh, biomedical facility where there's a lot of services, a lot of pipes, a lot of complexity is going to be larger than what we could deliver on like a single family house. But typically, on those large projects, they're 20% over budget at least, um, and they're definitely going to be uh, over schedule. And probably 10, 20% of that cost is going to be wrapped up in rework or just things that they hadn't expected on site. So we think that we can chip away at least 10, 20% of that total um, project uh, budget, but then we also think we can deliver extra savings in terms of productivity and reducing that schedule and compressing that down with better information. Okay, an order of magnitude in an absolute amount of savings per project would be what? I'd Quickly. Rather not put a number on that, or because okay. uh, it really does depend on the projects, and we're happy to give you a more detailed look at that backstage. It relies on the size and the complexity of the project. So. Okay, give it up for Scaled Robotics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that much. wraps Thanks, up. I'm going to try to.